Hi everybody and welcome back to The Journey Coach. This is Tammy Mosier. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you today and I've had some requests to kind of do an overview of my weekly planner and where that's kind of moved to. So for this episode, we're gonna talk about what it looked like when I first started and what it looks like now. And then I'll do a second video that will actually walk you through how to recreate it and make the template available. So let me start by going back to my weekly planner gallery. And this is where I put together the weekly agenda and I operate from a weekly viewpoint, if you will. That's how I plan. I like to be able to kind of look at what I've got going on for the week. And even when I used a paper planner system, I kept with the weekly format as well because it just made it so much easier for me to keep track of what I was doing and manage that time in a more holistic way every week. So when I first started with Notion, this was one of the first things that I played with building out. And so I started April 6th, the first of April, and my old planner went through there to mid-June and that's when I developed the new one and that started on the 22nd. So in my template gallery I still have both. I have the week, the first week's agenda and now version two weekly agenda. So to give you an overview of the old one I'm going to just give you a quick preview. You can of course go back and look at, at this um, with the old video on my weekly planner. And these are the properties that are part of the database, but I'm gonna go down here and kind of give you an overview of what this looks like, and then we'll get into the new one, just as kind of a counterpoint. So when I started this, I had a published section, a quote which I found interesting, top goals for the week, household tasks. These are links to the next four weeks worth of planners, so that if I go, oh, two weeks from now, I wanna do X, I can just click into it. This is my calendar view and a board, Kanban board by day, so I can see what my appointments are. Then a call out, these are my action items. So my board for that and then the grading list. Then at the very bottom, I put a note section and two trackers and below that a place to put links of different kinds. So this is what the original one looked like. And I worked with from April, the beginning of April to mid-June. But there were some things about it that didn't quite work for me the way I wanted them to. So now that I've given you a quick overview of this, let's go back in and look at one of the new weeks. So this is the new version of the planner. And my original planner was influenced by Marie Poulin, and that still holds a lot of influence for me. Uh, but I do handle some things differently and have started to build this a little differently. Up here at the top, I put the date range, and that's how I set up a lot of my boards to pull data. I have a grateful category, a keep in my thoughts. For some people, this might be your prayer list. Um, it's people that have or do influence me, provide me support, that I just wanna keep in my thoughts in terms of how grateful I am for them in any given week, or if they're struggling with something to keep them in my thoughts. My productivity level is a drop down. Um, wins, so the win of the week, if you will, something that happened that I was really proud of or excited about. These two areas right here, soul's journey and wisdom, these are what I would call my meditation prompts or mindfulness prompts. They're things that if I have a quiet 10 minutes or I make a quiet 10 minutes, I may pull a thought out of this to kind of focus on during that time. Any events of the week that kind of stand out anything that's nagging me, and then my focus projects. This is an important relationship to my projects database, and I'll show you how I use that in a minute. And then this is the connection to the research projects. So that gives you the database points. Now let's go down into the nuts and bolts and how this works. At this top line here, I have links to certain parts of my planner page. So if I want to do grading, I can click on that, and it takes me down to my grading section. And in the grading section, I've got actual grading that needs to be done. And then I have course development. If I've got any projects in terms of building out courses, this is where it would go. And I have two page links here for top of page, so I can click that and it brings me back up to this navigation at the top. So I've got an appointment section, which is right here. I have focus projects, pipeline activity, 
get things done, grading, and then research projects. And so these links take me to different parts of the page. Then I still keep my quote here. And I have several different things going here. The journey coach is something I do every week and I work on every week. And instead of adding action items into these other getting things done categories, I wanted everything related to the journey coach to have its own hub. And what I keep on this page is when I cut a video, like I'm cutting this one, this is part of the journey coach. I will document everything on the journey coach hub, but here I would just click that off. And so in my today's view, I can quickly see I've done that and I've worked on the book, but I haven't done a blog post yet or course. And so this lets me know what I need to get done in the hub. And that makes it very easy, top of mind, easy to reach out and deal with. But everything's organized in that one page, which I'll show you at a different time. These are quick to do. So things I don't need a to do an action item on with a lot of information. They're just something quick. Um, and that also falls into the same line for household tasks. So like changing light bulbs, um, calling the plumber. These are not things I need a whole action item, something that goes into my action item database. I just need to know to get it done. I don't need to track it later. If anything, I might move one of those items over into another planning list. And then I have two toggle lists here. The first is planning links. And so these are the next two week planners. So again, if I go, oh, next week I wanna do X, or I need to see what I've got going on next week, I'm not sure. I can click that, I'm in next week's planner. So easy to work with in that section. Then these are the links out to my business finance tracker, health and wellness tracking, and my information hub. So if I wanna move into those areas, I've got the quick links here at the top of the page. And then I've got a planning checklist. Now this could look different for different people, but for me, it's I wanna make sure as I'm beginning a new week, I do these things. So last week reflection, I need to finish off last week's weekly planner. I need to fill in the top parts. I need to reflect on how it went. And then I need to look at this week's and see if everything looks like it's doable to a certain extent. This week's meditation prompts. So are they there so that I have them? That's a Monday morning activity. Focus project set. So what I put right here in the focus projects ends up in my section of my planner, populates there. So have I set what I need or want in that area? And then review the pipeline. Does that look doable? What do I have coming up in that? So I can add different things. This is the beginning checklist. Those may change as time goes on, things get added. Um, but anything to do with planning, I would put in that checklist. Okay. So appointments, I've gone over this before. I haven't changed the way I handle this. I put a filter on it by the, the date range for this particular weekly planner and make sure that those are all populated. I have it set up so that I can see the Zoom links and quickly um, you know, click in to do that. I can add notes here so I can always go back to this planner. I do also have to keep a Google planner for um, coaching and um, consulting set up because I use Calendly so that people can actually pick times and, and um, set that all up and take care of it. And, you know, I don't really like double entry anywhere. I don't have to, I don't like using double systems, but it's quick to add it into Google. And my hope is when the API comes out that I either can replace this part of my weekly planner or we'll have a quick link to my Google so I can just click and add easily. We'll see what happens with that. But right now it's not too much extra time. Now the projects that I choose up at the top for focus projects automatically populate here in two galleries. The first are overall projects and the second are personal development. So basically classes I'm taking that have, you know, like this, um, CPHQ project. It's got a lot of action items associated with it. Um, this podcast, like a pro, has sections, modules that I need to complete and check off. So I hand them a little differently depending on how robust they are. And the filters on this is the date, or it's related to this week's week's um, planner. So it is up in that relationship field, and it has a master tag of personal development, and that puts it right here. 
This is filtered by, it's related to this weekly planner, and the master tag does not contain personal development. So that's how they get split into two separate views here. And that way I like them split like that because I can go, I have an hour, I wanna work on personal development, I wanna take some classes, finish some material, I can come here. And projects that require me to do work outside of that, if, for instance, some of these have action items and they actually are going to show up down here in my take action list, but if I just wanted to open the project and work out of the project, it would be a quick thing to do. So I'm going to go back top of page here and we've looked at appointments and focus projects. I have pipeline activity. This has to do with people that I'm actually working on coaching items with. And so anything that's coaching related would go here and that separates it out for me. It's a separate actual database but then here's my normal get things done and what changed here so up to this point the pipeline activity is new the focus project section is new and the way this is planned out is new and the organization around the page is new for my weekly planners you can see I've worked on this a lot and changed some things out so getting things done I also reorganized this and that this was set up by the Kanban board, but it was filtered in a different way up top. And what I finally decided I wanted to do, most things for me, I do have dates associated with the projects or the action item of when I want to have it done. But at the same time, they can really be juggled throughout a week for the most part. So what I wanted to make sure that I did here was actually put it into place and do it by time. So this is the amount of time that I think it might take to complete this particular item. And this way, when I'm working during my week and I go, you know, I've, I'm thinking clearly <laughs> um, and I've got a two hour chunk of time, I can go over here and go, okay, here's some things that I, these are ruled out because I don't have three hours plus, but I've got up to two hours. So I could really tackle any of this. And then on here, I've got in this category, it tells me focused, thinking, quick, or routine. So these are the choices right now. That might change a little in terms of energy level needed. So for me, focused means I need to be able to totally dig into this. My mental activity needs to be totally focused, and I need to be able to just give it the time it needs and be able to think clearly while doing so. I'm focused. Thinking means I may come back and forth to it. I may start it, I need to think about some things, I could move on to something else and then come back to it. So I know that, yeah, total, it may take me two hours to do this, that's how I've categorized it. But if it's thinking, that means I may come back and forth to it. So I may work on it all day, a total of two hours, but other things are interspersed in between. Quick, get in, get it done, get out. And routine, to me, means it could really take any amount of time, but as a routine activity, it doesn't take much mental focus to do, right? It's so routine, I can kind of just call it in, if you will, and my mind can be thinking about other things. So that little thing there tells me, this, this will take me an hour and it needs to be focused. So it gives me some ability to really think through what time I have and you know, if it's at the end of the day, I've got an hour at the end of the day, but my mentally tired, I'm not gonna tackle something that requires focused um, energy level. It'll have to be some of the other things on this list. So I have a 15 minute, a 30 minute, a 50 minute hour, two hours, three hours, over four hours. And that's how I kind of categorize these. Then I've got my grading, which the only thing I've changed here is just based on what institution I'm actually looking at and needing to do it for. And then I've added this section here. So I'm working on courses. I've got the course development window. Um, put in here the week that I've kind of got it set up and then I can go in here and these are set up with checklists so I know where I'm at in the process and know I can keep working on those and that's a toggle list too and then I can go top a page so this is how the planner has changed and what I like about this is it really does in many ways mimic what you can do with the paper planner in terms of being able to look at everything but the way it's organized and with the links around the page i can move to what i need to get to quickly i can move to other places like this is to my research projects page so if i want to work on research i click that it takes me completely out of my weekly planner 
but I can get to it from the weekly planner. Um, same thing with the Journey Coach Hub. I just click that and it, it's got a very similar type of organization and the ability to really move around in it. But everything that I have to do related to the Journey Coach, I can click on that and now I'm focused on the Journey Coach and the different components of it. And so this one-stop shop, if you will, makes everything so much easier to me in Notion because it gives me my landing place. Um, and this is what I leave up. It's my favorite. It's the top favorite item over in my bar. So when I open Notion, it opens to this page. And when I open it on my iPhone or my iPad, it opens to this page. So I can always very easily see what's happening here and can click into all of these areas and work in them. So it really um, is useful for me. And when, for instance, this week is over, and I'm, I'm closing it out, I'll come up here to this top corner and click to take it out of my favorite items. And then I will go here and go into this one and favorite it. And that means now I would be opening my Notion and it would immediately go to this page. So I hope this is helpful for those of you who maybe like to work out a Notion and like the idea of working um, with the system to help be more productive and have a good um, overview of your life and be able to really prioritize, but don't have the design capabilities or don't really have an idea on how to design it so it will work for you. I hope this gives you some ideas. Some of the ones I really use to give me um, some they're kind of my muse, I guess you would say. They give me some inspiration for what I do, and I take pieces of what I like from different people. Marie Pullen, William Nutt, and some of August Bradley's um, ideas I use. Um, I'm really playing right now in terms of his material in having both a due date, D-U-E, and a due date. In other words, when I want to get it done. And I haven't really played with that much, but I added it in here. So I could start to think about whether I wanted to use that as an organization system instead of the d due date, um, look at the DO date instead. So it kind of inspired me to start thinking about that and to go ahead and add the field, but I haven't actually done anything with it yet. So those are some of the other um, Notion pros that I like to look at and see what they've got going on and then kind of use that as a springboard for what will be useful for me. So I hope this can be useful for you. The next video I'm going to cut is I'm actually going to open up the template and I'm going to show you how to go through and replace all of these links out to the different um, databases and the views I have set up. And then I will make the template available with the instructions in it so that you can do it yourself. And here's one of the things about the templates. I like to look at other templates so that I can get a feel for how they work. But I often get more utility out of watching videos like this that others have cut. And while they're doing them, doing it myself. So I would watch a video like this by one of the pros. And then if they had a build it with me video that went with it as well, then I would actually follow along with that video because there's places I can pause it and make choices about how I want it to look. But the template I might pick up there would have some of these organization like the, the lines put in and the headings and these put in where all you have to do is do the links. And so that's what I'll be providing you. I'll give you the template. You can go get it and then we can build it. And that way it's unique to you. And that's what makes the template so valuable is that you can start with the design idea, start with maybe how they format it and then take it and make it yours. Have a great rest of the week and into next week. I'll have the next video out as soon as possible, maybe even by the end of this week as these are kind of a two partner videos. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to engage with you and help in any way possible. Until the next time, journey on.